I had no direct mentor. There were always people I looked up. So what I tried and I try always to absorb and, and learn as much I can from the from the different people I, I admire. My name is Beat Bühlmann. I'm the founder of uh, Fin Pension. I'm 40 years old. Um, I'm married, two kids, uh, two two young boys. The, the older one is six years old. The the younger is four. And we we also have two dogs. So I'm I'm quite busy also at home. Um, if I have uh, free time, leisure time, then I uh, really enjoy uh, running, uh, cycling. So endurance sport is is very important to me. I grew up in Kriens, That's next to Lucerne. I have two older brothers. Uh, they are twins and I grew up in a neighborhood with a lot of children so it was for me it was like the, the perfect setting for playing and, and, and learning uh, my my mother she stopped working when my older brothers were born and my my father um, had an optician shop so in the city of Luzern so he sold and created uh, glasses and uh, contact lenses but uh, my, my parents are uh, retired in the meantime I after my the, the secondary school or primary and secondary school I started a, a commercial apprenticeship uh, in Lucerne then I um, started uh, business administration at the University of Applied Sciences in Lucerne uh, with uh, with focus on, on finance and banking and then in 2006 I had the opportunity to join uh, Man Group one of the largest hedge funds to work there and at that time I then also started the CFA program the, the CAIA program uh, which I finished uh, I think in 2008 and then I went back to Lucerne. I got up to start at a, at a private bank in the area of uh, hedge fund research and portfolio management. Also there, I had a great time. I, I could learn a lot, so it was very interesting. I like the opportunity to realize my, my own ideas. I mean, it, as you can imagine, in an in a old private bank or in a, in a classical private bank, it's not a very dynamic uh, environment. When I, might, when I made, for example, when I made a proposal to change a process, uh, the feedback I often got was, uh, hey, we did it 20 years like this, like this, so why should we change it? So this is a bit the mindset. And I had to make a decision to stay in a, let's say, let's call it a golden key um, with, an, with a high prob- probability of not being happy over, over the longer term um, or to leave uh, a bit the comfort zone and to work on something I believe 100% and I really enjoy. Um, and this is how Fin Pension started 2015. Well, one additional point I mean you you probably ask you how did I get into finance I was already when I was very young I was interested in, in financial markets so I started I bought my first stocks when I was probably 14 or 15 years old so very early and at that time there were no online brokers so you you had to imagine I, I went to the UBS I went to a counter and the, the issue was the, the transaction costs they were like 8 francs per transaction so this was how it was at that time so I, I still wanted to buy stocks, but uh, the only way to make money, I mean, I had just a small amount to invest. So the, the only way to make money was to buy penny stocks. Uh, but this is how I started uh, um, with with, uh, with the equity markets. And a, co- a couple of years later, then, I mean, probably, or oh, maybe you remember, Credit Suisse launched uh, an online broker, uh, U-Trade. So I was very excited about it when, <laughs> when, when uh, this was launched. So the trading costs went down to 40 Swiss francs, but it's... it's still was high and then uh, I mean that all the online brokers emerged Ameritrade, E-Trade, Charles Schwab and this then gave really the opportunity to trade a bit more to be a bit more active I then also learned the, the, the whole dot-com bubble so this was my first uh, really meltdown of the markets I, I um, remember and I mean to cut the long story short or the, the takeaway for me uh, it took me it took me a few years also to learn how to invest properly um, I mean I, I paid my learnings I, I went through everything thing uh, and stock picking now is, is definitely not part of it and I think what really counts over the long term is as you probably all and also your uh, readers know I mean it's diversification and it's the investment horizon and this is how I invest today that's a bit my story I would say when it comes to business, uh, then Zurich Parallelplatz. I'm I'm a very structured guy, uh, and I try to be as efficient as possible always. Um, in leisure time, I'm probably more the Geneva Water Chat.
very honestly, I, I'm a bit bad when it comes to reading. But um, one book I really like was uh, was Principles from Ray Dalio. And this was the book I lost gifted to a friend. What I changed on my side a bit, I mean, I go running really a lot. So usually five, ten hours. And I started listening to podcasts. And this is what I do uh, very often and, and I, I really like. I often recommend podcasts to my friends. So for example, I mean, there are a lot of good podcasts around. But I really like the Tim Ferriss. Then I like the All In podcast and and also an entrepreneurial one, the the How You Build This podcast. But this is what I usually recommend to friends. And probably at some point in time there will be more time to read books. But at the moment I, I really listen a lot of podcasts. I'm not sure if you can say it in English uh, like this, but I would put uh, create good habits. I mean, one example, we, we have the office uh, in Lucerne on the fourth floor. In, in Geneva, we have also an office on the fifth or sixth floor. And I never take the lift, so I always go up the stairs and, and down. This is one, one of the habits, and I try to integrate it into a routine. And, and I think it adds up a lot over time if you if you integrate or create good habits and, and integrate it into your routine. That can be in, in the area of work, uh, family life, it can be in sports, so, so everywhere you could do this approach and I think it helps a lot over time. That's a very good question. I mean, we have no no interest in a in an exit. I mean, because working on on the vision we have and, and together with the team that we have is extremely fulfilling for me. And it's it's really not about um, money or an exit. It, it's all about uh, realizing. Uh, and we still we we see still so many opportunities in the banking sector. And we are convinced that we just started the journey with FinPensh. So there's a long way to go. There are very interesting projects ahead. I mean, besides the business, I mean, family would come first, of course, but uh, for the business, for, for FinPension, I would say that in, in five years, um, we, we have the banking license. With the banking license, we then also look for um, saving accounts or cash accounts for Pillar 3A Salute. Then I would say we have uh, over 10 billion asset on the management. We grow by over 2 billion a year. And I would also say, I mean, the, the core banking needs we see, uh, there are like four or, or five banking core, core banking needs we, we identified. We would like to have a solution for all those core banking needs. What do we see as, as core banking needs? First one is uh, retirement solutions. This is what we already have. Then the second one is probably investment solutions. There is maybe something ahead. Then um, savings. Uh, so cash accounts uh, is, is also what you need. Financing, uh, mortgages. And and stuff like this and the last one is payment so those five areas um, they are probably at some point in time on the roadmap and I would say in five years we should be able to speak a bit more in detail about those four or five uh, areas Not really. I mean, I see um, in individual areas, I see a, a bit of risk, um, especially through regulatory interventions. We are already uh, diversified with different offerings that we have. So I don't see a big disruption um, for the next couple of years in, for our business. Probably we are the disruptor. It's a very good question, uh, but I have to say, no, probably not. I mean, it's good that it's it's very good that we have the competition, uh, so that we both push each other for for better solutions. I mean, this is, in my opinion, is extremely. And and we have to see. I mean, Viog is partly owned by the Weir Bank. We see it as a big advantage to be completely independent from banks and insurance companies. And I mean, we we know Viog very well. So uh, we also have exchange from time to time. A few months ago, uh, my co-founder Ivo and I. We, we went for dinner with co-founders with Danny and, and Christian from, from Viog. And, and by the way, you, you probably don't know that. Uh, um, we all know each other really very well and we work together um, at the same private bank before. So uh, Ivo and Christian, I mean, the, my co-founder and the, one of the, the founders of Viog, they, they are best buddies. So the connections are really very close on a personal level, uh, at least. Yeah. Um, however, I mean, Ivo and, and Christian also, they, they agreed uh, when they meet. 
they don't talk about business. Uh, we, we try to completely separate it. We know each other very well and I think it's, it's very good that we, we push each other for uh, for a good solution. Um, also going forward with, with uh, new office, I mean, this is good to have the competition. Very short answer, I mean, we, we just have no influence on that. I mean, two things. I, I spend time with the family and, and uh, when I do sports, I mean, it's very important to me. I mean, I can clear my head um, during endurance sports or, or having a family time. And this is what I, I need and, and it gives me the, the balance I, I look for. Yeah. I mean, the, the first the first couple of years were extremely intense, regularly with over 100 hours uh, of work per week. So it was really tough. And I, I had two, uh, I would say I had two major challenges. And the first one was uh, my, my first son was born in 2017. So, uh, and I was in the middle of, uh, of building up the company. So I had to somehow balance the family life with, uh, with work. And this was was not that easy. And I mean, it worked out, but it it was tough. And the second one was this is something also probably a lot of entrepreneurs experience. And uh, this is also maybe a reason why why often entrepreneurs fail. I mean, you you need to have a lot of endurance. In after let's say after two or three years, you you probably still don't see an income, but you put in a lot of effort into your business, and then you need to put even more effort to achieve a tipping and this is really tough I think a lot of entrepreneurs quit on that way but you just have to go through it and this was in our case also a bit the case I mean I started in 2015 and in 2000 at the end of 2017 so after two and a half or three years we had an income of about 30,000 francs and I had to pay also for for uh, the co-founder um, a bit of salary so this was a tough time but we then saw hey the business and we just need to keep on running and, and pushing even even harder but but this is tough at the beginning especially um, I mean the income this comes much much more much later then so so you need to push and push and push now the work is is on a lot of different shoulders uh, when I started uh, if, if there was a problem with uh, with the website or so I had to go up during uh, during the night and try to fix it so I had to take care of everything but now I have all the, the experts around me work-life balance is completely different it's now we have a very good setup it's very well established we have around 25 people now um, in the companies it's uh, it's very well established and, and, and well organized now and work-life balance is also for me is very very good I, I still like working working a lot but not not 100 hours anymore per week so it's maybe down to, to 60 60 or so 60 70. So I'm I'm familiar with the concept. I know it, but to be very honest, it's it's not for me. Although I mean I'm an extremely rational person. Really, uh, I will probably have trouble uh, with the withdrawal phase. To be honest, my, my ambition also with the, with what I do with Fin Pension is to build up a sustainable cash flow. Always covers then my running costs that I have. It's a bit of a different concept. I, I probably have a bit. Of, I would have a bit of an issue, a mental issue with the with the withdrawal phase. Otherwise, it, it's also. I mean, you can say it's it's a kind of a fire concept uh, that I try to achieve, but um, it's it's slightly different. So what I try to not not to do is so no emotional decisions. If I have really something important on my on my desk, and then I I go to sport or at the sleep on it so that I can decide. And what I always think is very important, and what I try to do is I try to listen to the other person. I try to understand the view of the other person. For fin pension or in the case of important decision, I really allow myself time. And this has also I mean this has paid off several times. When it really comes to fin pension, for example, um, when was it? it was it was recently? I mean, I, I had a different opinion about uh, a new product than the other team members, than the, than the management team. I I tried to 
understand the view. I don't try to push something through because I'm I'm 100% convinced that together we are much stronger. And I have I have the luck that I have a very very smart and strong people around me. Uh, and so I accept they uh, disagree with my opinion. I then we move forward. And I think this is the way we need to do business. I don't put myself um, in a position that I have to decide. So we we are a team and and we are much stronger and smarter as a team. And I'm really very lucky that I have uh, such a smart uh, team around me. I had no direct mentor. Uh, there were always people I looked up, especially at previous jobs I, I had. Uh, there was one guy, uh, he had a uh, very well leadership. Uh, there was another guy, uh, research knowledge, um, and I looked up to him. So so what I try then, I try always to absorb and, and learn as much I can from the, from the different people I, I admire. But I, I had no direct mentor. That's the question I wanted to have. I would say, uh, give me a few more weeks and then we can set up uh, the perfect solution for your daughter at FinPension. Uh, I mean, I'm always up for, uh, for a fondue and a good conversation. Happy to invite you. I like to try out always a bit new things, so uh, also very small restaurants, and they make very often make very good experience. But there is one I probably can recommend, it's called FED, so F-E-D. Um, there is a very creative team behind it. They offer, um, it's like a food sharing concept, so you order a menu and then it's in the in the center of the table and you, you can share the food, you can try out, you can taste, so I really like that one. And it's in the city center of Brussels.